I feel I like, like we've done about it. 20 podcasts over the last couple of I years. I know. Yeah, people are going like, what, this guy again? You know? <laughs> That's my first time interviewing you. I know. So uh, I was actually really looking forward to this one because we've been hammering out a lot of mono and monos the last couple of weeks. And it's been the opposite end. Yeah. And just go for the ride. And I was like, oh, this this be relaxing really. It actually you know? is. I did one last week. Um, Damned If You Don't Podcast. It's very good with Thomas Arnold and Dara Ta and it was relaxing yeah. literally they sat where you are <laughs> and I sat here and I just waited for them to ask questions yeah. it was great this hit me hit me you it's know? relaxing yeah so yeah how how did you end up here how did you end up sitting in that seat like what was uh, today uh, or general no <laughs> general so I think you have a very interesting story you have two stories I think really and I was thinking about this today as I was coming in about why so many sports stars are now successful entrepreneurs. Mm. So I think maybe just give people a little bit of a backstory as to your origin. And it's the second time I'm having this conversation today. Um, because I just coming from shooting or recording my own episode of Mono y Mono with two still current professional rugby player Robin Copeland and former rugby player uh, Shane Cattle. And Shane O, similar to myself, he retired and started his own business and has run it the last four or five years. And Robin is at that stage where he's coming to the end, the twilight years of his career, and he's like, shit, what's next? And we dived into um, the mentality of what it takes to be successful in, in a startup business, um, the time it takes, and you'll know all about this, and, and the type of personality and, and all that kind of stuff. And the, the rugby and how rugby... I'm, bi- I'm definitely biased because it's my career and that, but I, I definitely believe that rugby ba- players, from the type of career and the attritional style of sport that it is, and the amount of hard times you have, both physically and mentally, that it gives you that grit and um, personality and work rate and everything that's required to be an entrepreneur. Mm. And uh, just to yeah give people listening who who uh, don't know much about me. Originally, my first career was a, was a professional rugby player. And that was something I wanted to be from the age of around 12. I made a conscious decision. I want two things. I want to either join the army and become a cadet and become an officer or become a professional rugby player. And that was it. And I've often said um, about that, I was very lucky to have that clear vision of what I wanted to do and that's one of the biggest issues you meet so many people today and they're in their mid-30s 40s still don't know what they want to do you know and because the world we live in it's it's like everything has a positive effect and everything has a negative effect because the world is is so connected now and there's so much opportunity and so many different things you can do it's like going into a candy store and you're kind of like shit what do I pick and you don't know and you never decide. Whereas you go back in the day, you have Mars and Snickers. Oh, I'm a Mars man. Oh, I'm a Snickers man. Job done. Makes your, your, your decision so much easier, you know? And I was lucky because I knew what I wanted to do. And everything I did um, catered towards achieving that goal. From 12. That's from very 12. early though. Yeah, from 12. And that's why I said I was lucky. What drove that though? That had been something that... Uh, well, I, 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 I always... I always played sport you know from a young age I played everything and my parents were great my dad introduced me to rugby when I was seven so I started that but they, they were never it was a case of do they they gave me free um, free reign in terms of choosing what sports I wanted to do but I was always doing sports you know dad he always the, the lessons you learn when you're a kid like there's an example because every Saturday, Saturday morning cartoons that's what it was about when you were a kid. It was Saturday morning. Get up. You'd be up at the crack yeah, of dawn to watch yeah, cartoons. Yeah. And training was every Saturday for the minis or whatever it was called. The kids in uh, Drogheda United at the time. Oh, Drogheda. Yeah, Drogheda RFC. Not Drogheda United. Drogheda RFC at the time. Um, um, and it started at nine o'clock. So we'd always get up and we'd, we'd watch the, the, have our breakfast and watch the cartoons before we go training, you know, at nine o'clock in the morning. And it was one morning where it was a horrible, wet day outside. Disgusting. And we bring our, our quilts, me and my brother would bring the quilts down and we'd line the couch and make a bed and, and we were lovely and warm and comfortable and watching cartoons, whatever it was at the time. And, and uh, dad came in and he says, lads, you need to get ready, you've, you've rugby training in the, in the next you know, 40 minutes, 50 minutes. And myself and Simon were like, dad, we, 
we made a we made a decision. We had a, a chat and we decided it's raining outside and we don't want to go. We're going to stay and we're going to watch cartoons. And I goes right, okay, lads, yeah, okay. He went over, turned off the TV. I said no TV for a month. You can stay here, but you're not watching TV. <laughs> Myself and Simon just looked at each other like, oh shit. So we ran off, got the gear, and right. a valuable lesson. Yeah, okay. You don't realize it at the time. So, anyway, that's the kind of household we had, and okay. love, and it helped that I was good at sports as well. If you're good at something, you want to do it more, and it just becomes your routine. Mm -hmm. It's your life. It's, it's, it's like, you know, don't do a diet, do a lifestyle. You know, it's the same thing for, for us with sport. And then we played everyone, played Gaelic, tried a hand of golf, wasn't very successful at it. Uh, but still, um, you know, uh, football, soccer, football was another one. So I, I stopped the uh, rugby for, for maybe two years and played uh, football and draw the, draw the boys and loved that as well. Um, and then I, f I went back to the rugby at around 11, 12. And I kind of, because I would watch it and because I loved it and I was very, very good at it. I was like, Jesus, if you can do this as a profession, I'd love to do this. Mm. And the rugby, uh, the, the army side of the things, I love history. I love military history. I was fascinated by it and that just how, I don't know, whatever it was. And I said, oh, I would love to be in the army, be an, uh, an officer or whatever as well. So, um, and they, they kind of complemented each other. And I knew if the, for whatever reason, the professional rugby thing didn't happen, I can do the the, uh, the army thing. Mm. And they did a brilliant thing. In, I went to St. Oliver's Community College in Drogheda. And they did a brilliant thing in that school, whereas first years, they would record them. And they would ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? That's very interesting. And when you do, when you're leaving in sixth year, they play the video back to the whole year. Really? And you get to see yourself, and are you still, is that still what you want to do? And see yourself as a kid. That's such and a great idea. Brilliant, brilliant thing. And yeah, my, my thing is there, army or rugby, and it was still when I was 18 what I wanted to do. So, um, and it's, it's, as I said, it's um, it's it, I taught me a valuable lesson in goal setting. Um, you know, there's other things as well I want to do as well. It's just like Gaelic football. I wanted to play for Mead Miners, which is another big thing. Mm. And you could do both up to a you know certain point because rugby was was a winter sport generally, and then Gaelic right. was was summer. You know, in, in for the most part, and it was great for fitness. You know, when you weren't kept you fit mm. and and your skill sets the way Rob Kearney, you know. The English are like, how is he so good at catching ball? Because he was an unbelievable Gaelic footballer, you know. So I uh, had that, but it it's um, it's uh, like with rugby perspective, those step by step goals. I wanted to be play professional rugby for Leinster in Ireland. There's my goal. I must give credit to my my auntie Ashling. Uh, she lives. She still lives in Australia, but she come back to Ireland in in the in the nineties with this visualization stuff. Mm. and she'd be going this positivity thing and like she's like oh how are you going oh we're grand don't say you're grand say you're brilliant mm. because and this is a way like what's she talking what's she talking about you know and I said listen if you if you want to do something write it down put it on the wall mm. you know it's like that's what I want to do and we're going with kids and we're kind of like well in the 90s that would have been unheard of like, yeah. you, you've kind of preempted my next question it's going to like this all sounds quite logical for a 12 year old 13 year old so that's been another influence so yeah, well, that wouldn't uh, her influence coming through yeah well that there and, and it was only a small thing it was one because she was home very rarely mm. but she bring home and she was into yoga and she was into all this stuff you know and you're kind of like she was you know i wouldn't say kooky but like she back was then yeah out there, back yeah. then definitely uh, it's normal now mm. you know and all those little things and obviously influence of my parents and, mm. and my mother um my grandparents as well stuff you know nature and nurture you know mm. it's a combination of both, both yeah. in your environment definitely but there's just something in you too you know like my my the entrepreneurial stuff my my grandfather on my dad's side like he died in 91 i believe so I had very little exposure mm. to him but his personality and what he was extremely successful entrepreneur you know back in the I'd say back in the, the 50s and so he would have been equivalent of a millionaire back then for right. business which was a lot of money back mm. then and um, like he had clothing factories in Dublin, producing clothes shops in Dublin and Drogheda and all that, and um, um, enjoyed himself. Often the stories I'd hear from if anyone has ever seen Mad Men, the show, yeah, yeah. heavy drinker, suits, dressed well, that kind of lifestyle, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, worked hard but played hard, and there's that influence, and that was passed on to my dad.